One of the most significant events in the history of plant evolution is about to unfold in this coniferous forest. This annual event is an impressive demonstration of a 300 million year old evolutionary leap. These plants, pine trees, live on dry land. That was not always the case. The earliest plants lived and reproduced in an aquatic environment. These plants shared genes by releasing male sperm into the water. Moving freely, these male gametes find and unite with a female gamete. Sexual reproduction has occurred. The essential role of water in this process confined plants to the lakes, rivers and oceans of our early planet. That changed with the appearance of the first plants capable of living and reproducing on land. The conifers, like these pine trees, represent one of the most successful stories of adaptation to living on land. A key part of that adaptation required that sexual reproduction could take place without a body of water. Let's investigate this adaptation. It is late May here in the Upper Ottawa Valley. This coniferous tree is a red pine, Pinus resinosa. Inspecting the tips of the branches, we find some interesting structures. These small red objects are female cones. They contain tiny ovules. Ovules that when fertilized will develop into seeds. These other structures are male cones. They are filled with maturing grains of pollen. Pollen contains the male gamete, similar to the sperm released by the earlier aquatic plants. When mature, the male cones open, releasing the pollen grains, often in a dramatic cloud. Other species of pine have a similar morphology. These clouds of pollen are being released by a Scots pine, Pinus sylvestris. Watching clouds of pollen swirling around a pine forest is an inspiring sight. You are witnessing the triumph of airborne reproduction. Plants have escaped, no longer confined to the wetlands and oceans of planet Earth. Examining pine pollen with a microscope, we can see air bladders, spherical structures that reduce each pollen grain's density, allowing them to carry further on the wind. Under the right conditions, pine pollen can travel thousands of kilometers. Once the pollen is released, the pollen cones wither and fall to the ground. The volume of pollen produced by the conifers is remarkable. During the release, you may notice a yellow film on lakes and rivers. This film is on the Ottawa River in early June, created by conifer pollen floating on the river. During this process of pollen release, the female cone waits. Pollination will occur when this cone captures some airborne pollen. The captured pollen must be from a tree of the same species. These captured pollen grains will share their DNA with the DNA of the ovules inside the female cone. When the DNA from the male gamete successfully enters the ovule, fertilization is complete and the process of producing a seed begins. In many species, the interval between pollination and fertilization can be over a year. With pollination completed, the seed cone grows. Seeds are developing inside. This is a long process. Mature cones wait for the right conditions before releasing seeds. When ready, the scales on the cone separate, dropping the seeds. This is a mature white pine cone, Pinus strobus. This is a seed. The reproductive cycle of coniferous trees is complex. Some species like jack pine, Pinus banksiana, have adapted to take advantage of forest fire cycles, retaining their unopened cones for years until fire triggers seed release. The advantage to this is that fire has cleared the landscape. The germinating seeds find little competition for their first years of life. The cyclical natural events that occur in our landscape can be fascinating. If you enjoy observing nature, you can witness this conifer pollination in most communities. The dates of conifer pollen release varies. 
Here in the Ottawa Valley, at latitude 45 degrees north, this event occurs between late May and mid-June. We have more science and technology videos at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the videos link.